If someone puts me, like, drafts me in the military, I'm so sorry. I'm running the other way. Do you think that men have a duty to defend you while you sleep? Do you think that men would be cowards if they did not go to the draft? I don't, I don't necessarily think they'd be cowards. Well, then who would protect you? Couldn't tell you. Do you think that men have a responsibility to show up for the draft? If they're drafted? To defend the nation and make sure that you're protected? Yes. Well, then how come you don't? If men who aren't drafted in the military don't protect us, I don't know who's going to protect us. Right. So if Girl they have power. that responsibility and they're cowards if they don't go to the draft, right? Somebody has to go. You prefer that it's them over you, right? Yes. It doesn't sound very equal. You're talking about feminism being part of this equality and uh, anti-patriarchy. It would appear that patriarchy is necessary because you want them to go and fight wars on your behalf so that you can sleep at night without uh, having any troubles, right? And you don't want to go fight those wars. <laughs> so nothing bad happened? Mm -mm. You, you didn't wreck it? Mm -mm. You didn't hit anybody? Mm -mm. You didn't run anybody over? Mm -mm. You didn't get a speeding ticket? Mm -mm. Wait, Jeffy, mm -mm. why are you making that face? Mm -mm. Jeffy, did you get a speeding ticket? Mm -mm. If anyone cares, I now identify as bacon. 73% fat and salty as buck. This is Put a Finger Down, Place You Had Sex Edition. In a car, in a hotel, <laughs> in a shower, someone else's house, a movie theater, a cemetery, school, work, a park, a river pool or beach, <coughs> woods, or in your own house. Not everybody fits in the bad bitch genre. It's a genre. Not everybody fits on the Rasta. Can someone tell me why it still hurts even when like you're getting back into dating and you feel more, more mature and you end things with someone after like a couple of dates and like I've been on like three dates recently, like three dates with three different guys, but I, I've gone on like second dates with all of them, second or third dates. And I ended it with one guy, the other guy ended it with me, but I was gonna end it with him anyway. So that was mutual. And this other guy, you just can tell he doesn't feel it. And like, I thought that because I'm more mature and because it's mutual or because I'm making the decision that it would be less hard and I would be less sad because it's early on and stuff, but I think when it's just stacked on top of each other, like it adds up, like, why am I crying? Like, does anybody else feel this way? Even just like, when you feel like you're mostly healed and you're going back into dating, like, why does it still fucking hurt? I hate it out here. <laughs> so she wrote in the video description, I'm cringe, but I hate dating. Hashtag dating 101, hashtag dating in your 20s, hashtag NYC dating. To answer her question, women aren't built to sleep around. That's why her body becomes sad to signal to her to get back with the last man she was with. The only problem is the guy moved on because she didn't know how to keep, and there's no one around to encourage her to keep a relationship. This seems to be a good sign that she can still pair bond, but it sounds like she's not taking the hint from her body that she can't be breaking these bonds, because she just quote unquote dated three guys in a row. And I use the word dated loosely because it means in 304 code that she could have slept with them, especially after a breakup for a rebound. Eventually, if she continues to sleep around, her emotional connection to each relationship will go away until every new guy will just be a swinging dick to her. This is why at least 25% of women in the feminist West are on some type of drug to suppress the emotional damage that comes with being a 304, along with anti-anxiety drugs which suppresses the body from feeling guilt for being an HOE. The top comment says, Try just dating one person at a time instead of multiple. It's crazy how people serial date these days. Yeah, and this is why I tell men to stop giving free relationship benefits to women, because it gives them an incentive to date more men at once, to have their whole life catered to. This includes your time and attention. If she doesn't clearly express that she's only talking to you, then you're probably one of the many men she's using to fill up her empty life. Three at a time, good lord. A verified TikTok thought comments, I believe being able to make these hard decisions is a sign you're getting closer to your person. Many people stay in relationships or keep dating people they know aren't right for them. Nah, the closest she'd ever get to her person was when she was a virgin, but she probably threw that away for some high school chat at a party. 
The more these females date, the more entitled they become because they're able to experience the best qualities and dating benefits for men. So anything less, as in an average guy's benefits, is a letdown. Nothing will impress and woo her if she gets flown out to an exotic location by a pro athlete. Hey, don't worry, it gets even worse in your 30s. She's definitely going to make a video asking where are the good guys once she hits or is about to hit the wall. And to answer her question, the good guys aren't into women dating three men at once, even during the talking phase, so she might as well order a lifetime supply of wine because she's going to need to drink herself to sleep for the next 50 years. I'm going to say what I want till the day somebody beats my ass. And then I'm going to say what I want with a black eye. The only reason women go to bars is to get male attention and validation. They want us to hit on them. No. The only reason you go to bars is to hit on and bother women. We go there to have drinks with our friends. And actually, the entire situation would be made so much more pleasant if you just left us alone. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't you the ugly one in the group? Is that why you're mad that men are talking to your friends but not you? You're the clock blocker who tries to keep your friends single because you're single. That's a sad existence. Also, if women were only going to bars to talk to friends, then why go to bars in the first place? That's where single people meet up. Why not talk to a friend at someone's house or a painting class? Why is it modern women always want to hang out where single men go? These feminists want to have the option to talk to the top 10% men, but also claim they're victims when men show them interest. They want that validation and the opportunity to bag on men and reject men. That's why they quote-unquote socialize at bars and so-called just dance with each other at clubs, while men actually go to bars to watch sports and shoot the pool or play darts. You don't see the bars full of women when a football game is playing. Please stop telling women in their late 20s, early 30s that time's a ticket. You better get on it. If you're single, wow, you might be fucked if you're 30. Listen, first of all, not every woman on this fucking planet has the agenda of getting married to a douchebag just to have children, okay? What we are doing now as a society is forcing it and pretty much like putting so much pressure on women my age to just find someone and get children going because it's, you're just getting older. You're fucking 29. I'm literally 29. Kick rocks. I'm still young. You psychopath. You fucking psychopath. We are literally pressuring women to marry dirtbag men just to have children. Divorce is skyrocketing. If I felt that pressure to do that and I married one of my exes, Girl, mm-mm, mm-mm, could not be me. I am doing fine. I am happy. If it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Stop just assuming that I am on a timeline because you are not putting me on a timeline, you stupid fucks. Get the fuck out of here. Sniff grass. Stop telling me that I'm old and time sticking, literally. Because if I'm living my life and every year I get older, I'm getting more upset and I'm just getting more stressed. What the fuck is the point of living life? Bitch, I am aging like fine fucking wine. I am more secure with myself than I ever have been in my entire fucking life. I'm sorry if men can't handle it. I'm like person is wasting time on all these men because every year that goes by, I get wiser, stronger. I have higher standards. And you're wasting time. Being a dumb fuck, being a loser, being an immature asshole. So I think you should stop telling women that they're losing time because they're fucking not. Who's going to tell her? She just admitted that she got pumped and dumped by D-bags. Her acting like she doesn't need a relationship is like when an employee says they quit after they just got fired. The cope is super real and massive. 29 isn't young anymore. 90% of her eggs are going to be gone. The reason why she may not be panicking just yet is because she's still able to be a booty call for these players and D-bags. And like always, women mistake SMV with RMV, aka sexual market value with relationship market value. She thinks just because she's getting banged out by the top 10% men, she can also get their commitment, when it's the opposite. They know she's trash, and they can treat her as such. The fact that she cusses like a sailor and views males as dirtbags solidifies it. 
you gotta ask yourself, why is she only going after D-bags? It's because she's been banged out by so many men, she's numb to regular guys and romance. Only the drama of getting played or being treated like dirt excites her and turns her on. Top comment says, I keep getting older and keep getting higher standards. Good luck with that. Hitting the wall is like falling off of a cliff. You don't realize it until it finally happens. She's not even 30 yet and she's already bitter. Yet she thinks her shit doesn't stink. There's a reason why these men in her life didn't stick around. Could it be she's the common denominator to all these so-called dirtbags and d-bags? Which means she's actually the dirtbag. Sweetheart, them little things called eggs that men need you for are almost expired. Stop procrastinating. And it's more than that. She's not fresh anymore. Despite working out, she's gaining weight. We see fat gathering on her stomach, sides, and arms. And she's bitter and jaded to the point that she to drive away a blind man. Another comment. I wonder what her body count is at 29, and the day she does find Prince Charming, she will tell him the honest number she's at then. She makes videos on TikTok, so I'm pretty sure she's been flown out at least once or twice. As for telling the guy she's going to try to suck her into marriage, I highly doubt she'll be honest about her real body count. She, like many post walls, will talk about her exes and imply she's only slept with those men. While the truth is, between the exes is where her and most women do their HOE phases, because she's single and has no relationship to be held accountable for. Me. You're getting your fucking shoes off of it. So it is official. Last night I experienced my first Karen. So here's the story. Every single night at 9.50, I had to work. Mind you, I live in Harlem, New York City. And my job is in Connecticut. So I gotta take the Metro North to go to, to Connecticut for my job every single night. Per usual on my route home, I hop on the train. At this time of the night, it is always pretty packed, so I gotta go to the first couple, few train cars in order to find a seat. It was slim pickings because, again, it was busy. So I decided to sit in front of this older lady. Wasn't sitting next to her, was sitting in front of her with plenty of space between us, like a two-seater facing another two-seater. As I approached and sat down, she was, you know, sitting in her seat, legs crossed to the side, minding her own business on her phone, whatever, cool. The second I sit down, she leans into me and goes, can you move to the seat next to you? And I look at her puzzled and I'm like, um, why? She goes, because I want my feet where you're sitting. I didn't answer, I just looked at her, kind of like. She goes, so, are you gonna move? And I looked at her, I said, uh, no, I'm not moving. She's like, why, why not? I told her because I'm, I'm sitting here. So she said, well, I want my feet up and there are plenty other seats for you to sit in, so, you go move so I can put my feet up. I'm an old lady, I think I have the right to do so. I said, I'm, I'm not moving, sorry, but I have every right to sit here. And from that point on, she starts mumbling to herself, insulting me, and whatever, whatever. And as I'm sitting there minding my business, trying to get my ticket ready for the conductor, she starts sliding down in her seat. Mind you, this woman is 71 years old. The way your back is positioned like this is not good for your back nor your posture. You should not be doing that at your grand age. So as she's sliding down the seat, she is now sliding so her feet are invading my personal space. And she is now touching me with her feet against my legs. And I thought at first it was an accident. Got nothing of it. I was like, okay, maybe she just doesn't realize how close she is to me. I bring it up to her and I ask her, I was like, sorry, ma'am, but you, you were touching me. Would, would, I would really appreciate if you would not do that. She said, oh, well, you're sitting where I want my feet, so I'm going to continue to touch you until you move. So I repeat myself, I say, I'm becoming very uncomfortable. I would really appreciate if you moved your feet and stopped touching me. She again said, she's like, I'm going to do what I want because you're sitting where my feet should go. So at this point, she picks up her one foot, puts it to the left of me on my thigh and is now wrapping her foot around my ankle. So clearly because she's old, she must have not heard me the first two to three times I had asked her to please stop touching me and leave me in my space alone. So now I'm yelling. So now everyone on, on the train can hear the situation because you're not going to make me uncomfortable like that. And you're not going to invade my personal space and harass me. Once I start yelling, she then puts her foot up my face like this, her dirty bottom of her soul. The conductor finally comes over and is like, whoa, what's going on? What's all the yelling? So I start to tell him what's happening. Mind you, she's still touching me and refusing to move her feet away from me. And this is where I realized that I should be recording this for my own safety, so I did. Long time and she just keeps- That's why I want- well, 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 She's being the fuck. People can sit anywhere they want. She's pretty crazy. I'm not my 
You were actually harassing me. You were touching me without my consent. Sorry. Do you realize that? I'm sorry, sweetheart. And this is up until I decided to stay here. Your feet were in your space. Please, thank you. I think you should stop trying for her. You, you decided to move your feet and touch me. Get your feet off of me! How fucking dare you? You're 75? You should be fucking ashamed of yourself. You are acting like a child. You! These are empty seats. There's plenty of space. You did not decide to do this until I sat here. You were the one causing the issue. You decided that you were all high and mighty. You got to sit in your high pedestal. And when I decided to come sit here, you decided to cause the problem. And you were still touching me. No, I'm not going to move because this is ridiculous. You are the one who was harassing me. You were touching me without my consent. You're touching me. Get the fuck off of me. You're getting your fucking shoes off. Stop it. Fine. No, no. How about that, bitch? What's the issue? Your feet are still right there. But my feet here, they're in my space. You're taking up the entire area. This does not belong to you. That seat you paid for does. I'm just not right here. here. This is where I paid for so I can sit. Thank you. You too. When I put my feet up, I'm going to put them up. Right? No, the fuck you're not. And I hope he's got a cop on the train. Yeah. So the situation had escalated to the point where the conductor grabbed the cops because what I was doing clearly wasn't doing anything, I know. Uh, but I am a person who has very severe anxiety, so I was getting to the point where I was having an, a panic attack. The police came and was trying to talk to me, and I gotta say thank you to the woman that was sitting behind that hag who stood up and told the cops what was happening because I was in full-blown panic attack mode. I couldn't verbalize anything. And whilst I'm having a panic attack and I can't speak, I'm crying because I'm overwhelmed, this lady is mocking me and mocking me for being anxious and talking shit while I'm trying to talk to the cops about what's going on and what she's doing to me and how she's harassing me and even probably even assaulting me at that point. But it got to the point where they ended up diffusing the situation as best as they could. She pretty much got a slap on her fucking wrist of don't do it again. And they walked me to a different area to sit instead of removing her from the situation. But that's besides the point. So, um, oh, and she offered me fucking crackers. After doing all of that, she offered me crackers. No, I don't want your fucking crackers. Babe. No, but that's my first go around with a Karen. Would not recommend it. <laughs> don't want to do it again but unfortunately i can't control that the good thing is though my best friend said she's going to give me a lesson on how to be mean aggressive and intimidating because i need that i'm a little too nice let's be honest a post ball who no one wants versus a future cat lady women privilege versus women privilege one big feminist feedback loop error 304 instead of 404 and because it wasn't a man she can't blame all men that's probably why she's even more triggered 
can't use her woman card and blame male privilege or all men for this. Top comment with over 200k likes says, I fear the day a Karen ever meets me because of the way my life has been life in. I hope it happens because that would be super entertaining to watch. These Karens have gotten out of control. Another comment with over 100k likes says, Karen's calmness is a bit sinister. These females have never faced accountability. The feminist society has made it easy for her to mistreat others. This is the type of entitlement that votes for higher taxes and a bigger government to take care of these single women. This is why your business is forced to support feminists like her who want all the benefits of being with a man without being with one. Another comment with over 140k likes says, You should have told the cops you want to press charges against her for assault. This is feminist New York. Cops don't even arrest shoplifters anymore. Why? Because the feminists voted for it. They wanted criminal Chad and Tyrone to be released onto the street after committing a crime with cashless bail. And they voted for defund the police, which means less resources to solving actual crimes. Also, this is the passive-aggressive behavior that males have to deal with all the time. If there were no cameras, no one would believe it. A heartfelt story of how in 11th grade I became a school slut. I just moved across country and started a new school. I had exactly one friend. We'll call her Shady, because she was a shady fucking bitch. She started dating a senior boy and didn't want to hang out with me. Which is fine. She got all these new cool friends and they didn't like me because I was new and a girl and I guess that's enough reason. Well, Shady started telling everybody that I fucked a bunch of people and I was like, what the heck? How? Who? I literally sit at home and watch Harry Potter. I have no friends. Nonetheless, they'd taught me in the hallways and be like, you slut. Or they'd follow me to the classroom and be like, we're gonna beat your ass. They'd mess with me on Facebook and be like, we're gonna kill you. And I'd be like, why don't you like me? And they'd be like, die. And I'd be like, okay, fair enough. <laughs> so I got tired of the bullshit. I was like, I'm gonna become the one thing they fear the most. A real whore. <laughs> So shortly after, I made one other new friend. His name was Juan, and he was great, and I loved him, and he would invite me to all the parties. I'd go to these parties to get drunk and make out with the guys that these girls liked. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's pretty petty, but nah. So when I would return to school after the weekend, they'd be like, you're a whore, I'd be like, true. <laughs> There's really no moral to the story, but if you can't go high, just go really fucking low and beat bitches at their own game. I don't think that's a flex this bird brain thinks it is. Uh, W-H-O-R-E is the lowest female out there. Dating-wise, besides a single mom. And women usually don't tell the whole truth when they're voluntarily confessing something, so I highly doubt it was just making out at parties, where there's underage drinking for sure. This female has ruined the rest of her life calling herself an HOE because no man she'd respect would want to be known as the sucker who married the neighborhood bike, where everyone got a turn for free. It's fun and games now while she's young and attractive, but when she hits the wall, she'll find out her true relationship value the hard way, which is no value. I'm pretty sure even at her age now, no man of worth is going to commit to her. Men love to feel special and there's no amount of gaslighting and lying she can do to cover up the fact that she referred to herself as an HOE. So many females in the comments section relate to this 304. Can we be best friends? This is amazing. Yes, you're my soul sister. This is everything. I love this so much. Just shows how trash women in the feminist west really are. A simp comments, when I have a daughter and they have problems with bullying, I'll show them this TikTok. Bruh, and this is why the younger generations that have a father are still turning out to be 304s. Because the fathers are weak, betas, misguided, or are not red-pilled. If people, especially other females, are calling your daughter a 304, it's probably because she's acting like one, which means she needs to stop. So today I'm going to be showing you guys the most basic dorm room UCLA offers. And I want you guys to guess how much UCLA is charging their students to live in this dorm. So let me show you guys inside. Keep in mind, this is the smallest dorm at UCLA and it is the cheapest. So welcome inside. Um, right when you come in, there's a bunch of storage. So let me show you guys inside. Come over here. You can see how much room. You can fit so many clothes inside, which is perfect. And you also have more space in here. <laughs> so come along. Every person gets a bunk bed and a desk and then closet space, as I mentioned. So you can just keep coming along. I know it's really small, um, but this dorm actually has the best view. Let me show you. Let's see those dumpsters. Another thing to mention is that the students in this dorm rented the fridge and microwave from the university. It cost $600. Now, I have a question for you guys. How tall do you think I am? I can stand like this and touch both sides of the beds.
So all of the rooms on this floor share this bathroom. And as you can see, there are a bunch of different stalls, so you will not need to wait for a turn in the shower. There is so much room in this bathroom, so although there are about 30 people sharing this bathroom, it is quite spacious. And as you go this way, it is where all of the toilets are. 600 bucks to live like the kids of a deadbeat single mom who can only afford a two-bedroom apartment but has at least two kids, which means they have to share a room with bunk beds. They're trading their prime years to eventually become a barista at Starbucks because their degrees are worthless, no matter if it's from a top college like UCLA. 50 years ago, women their age already owned their own house because they got married to a hardworking man. But feminism happened, and now this is so-called progress, sharing a small room with four other adults like they're in a summer camp. It's crazy how in the USA it's still common to share. Here, and in a lot of other countries, everyone gets their own. In other countries, not everyone gets to go to college, and it's not a Ponzi scheme yet. Meaning, especially in the developing countries, only the best and brightest get to go to college to actually study a real discipline, not women's gender studies for LGBTQ literature or teaching. That's a luxury compared to my dorm. They're getting charged more for less, and have compound interest on those loans. Meaning if they pay the minimum on those loans, it'll double and triple the original cost. These young women are going to be debt slaves for the rest of their lives. There's no men that save them because of the MGTOW reality. My dorm is smaller than this, and I pay $22,000 a year for it. These females can't even do basic math. $22,000 per year is a house down payment. Five ways women lose a good man and how you can avoid it. Let's get into it, ladies. Number one, taking them for granted. A man been so good to you for so long, you no longer see the value in him and what he does for you. Number two, not communicating well or effectively, like expecting a man to read your mind and getting mad when he can't. Number three, being dismissive about how your behavior makes him feel or becoming overly defensive when you're being held accountable for your action. Rumor has it that women struggle with accountability. Mm. Number four, being self-consumed and unwilling to compromise, being so hyper-focused on your laundry list of needs, desires, wants, that you neglect his needs in the process. Remember, a relationship is not just about you or one person getting their needs met. And number five, allowing your unaddressed trauma, your insecurity, make it hard for that man to enjoy his life and pursue his purpose in peace. Becoming insufferable. Mm. Number one way to lose a good man is to act masculine, which is the way you're acting right now. Men don't want to be married to another man. They want a soft-spoken lady who's their peace and helps them relax. Every time this female opens her mouth, no matter how inspiring her speech is, she gives off nagging vibes. It's like she tells you to take out the trash every time you hear her voice. These females need a mute button because literally quiet is more valuable than their bimbo thoughts. And this female addressed the super basic requirements which just shows how bad it is to date in the West. Nothing about cooking and cleaning for the man or actually making him happy. It's, to sum it up, stop being a self-centered B-I-T-C-H. My biggest regret in life is getting my tubes tied. And it's not just because I want to get pregnant again. Doctors will promise you that it's not hormonal. It is. And it's caused my hair to fall out at a very alarming rate. Weight gain and not being able to lose that weight. And let's not even get started with the fucking periods. My periods are so bad after getting this procedure done that I have to get iron infusions because I'm severely anemic because of the amount of blood I am losing during my period. My doctor's solution, getting back on birth control to control the bleeding. That defeats the fucking purpose. I got this done so that I didn't need birth control because it's really bad for your body. Truth be told, I would have rather just stayed on birth control because the effects that this has had on me is worse. If you're on a birth control that you don't like, you can stop taking it or you can have it removed. Once you get your tubes tied, you're stuck unless you pay $6,000 to get them untied. And when I said that in my last video, because I made a video saying I regretted getting my tubes tied because I wanted more children, that is true. But I said that I wasn't paying $6,000 to have it reversed. Everybody was like, well, if you can't afford to pay $6,000, you can't afford to have another child. No, I just don't see a point in paying $6,000 for a 10 minute procedure that you only have a 50-50% chance of even getting pregnant again. 
because doctors will tell you that there's a 75% chance you can get pregnant after getting them untied. My doctor told me it was way less than that. It was only about 50%. And that's another thing. These doctors are not fully transparent with you. I did a lot of research and I was aware of the negative side effects. When I brought it up to my doctor, he assured me that that's not true. And so I went ahead and got this done and I wish I didn't. Depression. My depression is worse, way worse. My anxiety is way worse. My mood swings is way worse. Most women who get this procedure end up needing a full hysterectomy. Speaking of hysterectomies, I would have gotten a hysterectomy, but most doctors will not do it unless it's medically necessary. I did my research because I really only wanted to go through with this because I was told that it was not hormonal. When you do your research, it'll tell you that it's not hormonal and your doctors will tell you that it's not hormonal and that it does not affect your periods. It's a lie. It does affect your hormones tremendously. And if you read the comments on that video that I made, it's pinned, you will see that it affects your hormones. And all these things that your doctors promise it doesn't do, it does. And I know every woman's body is different. You know, some women get this procedure done and they have no issues. But there are a lot of risk factors that come with this and they're very common. Sex drive. Since getting my tubes tied, I hate the thought of sex. I kind of have a case of a dry down there, okay? That's also very common. Most women end up being put back on birth control to control the bleeding, which again, defeats the purpose and is what my doctor tried to get me to do. A lot of women experience depression, anxiety, lower sex drive, hair loss, all these different things. And doctors tell you that it's not because of hormones, but let me show you this. Some doctors speculate the lingering problems could be the result of hormone loss or other undiagnosed conditions. Hormone loss, hmm. How would that happen? I don't know, probably because getting your tubes tied affects your hormones. And I'm not trying to tell anybody what to do with their body. You know, it's your body. It may work really well for you. I'm just going off my experience and I'm going off the experience of many other women who have commented the negative experiences they have had after getting their tubes tied. Doctors are not fully transparent with you. They don't tell you the truth. And when you look on Google to do your own research, one thing tells you it affects your hormones. One thing tells you it doesn't. There's no definite answer in anything. And obviously there's not going to be because like I said, every woman's body is different. But these are just things that I want you to take into consideration if you are thinking about getting this procedure done. Because I wish I had it. I'd imagine tying the tubes signals to the body that it's all downhill from now. If there's no way to create babies anymore, then screw it. No need to try to attract a man either. Hence why the hair is falling out already. It doesn't know that she did this so she can have more bedroom fun and not get pregnant. And there's a natural thing called menopause, but I guess these females can't wait that long. Modern feminism has convinced women that these critical body functions like periods are an inconvenience. When things like periods cleanse the body of toxins, which is one reason why women live longer than men, and it allows them to have kids. Who would have thought stopping a natural body function will have serious side effects? Who would have thought these doctors would lie to make money? It's not like Big Pharma gives them kickbacks for prescribing patients various drugs. It's not like they don't have a second sports car and a medical school loans to pay off. It's not like Big Pharma will hire attractive female reps to promote products by sleeping with the doctors. Yep, I've talked to two other people and all of our periods are horrendous after a tubule. And Doc said it wouldn't affect anything. Play stupid games and win stupid prizes. I got my tubes removed and it is the worst mistake I've ever made. Let's face it, most females today do this or take birth control pills so they can sleep around even more. At least with the risk of a pregnancy, they're either forced to use a condom or be more selective with the men they choose to do the dirty deed with. I removed my tubes at 25, and yes, my period is horrible, I lost so much hair. Yo, hormonal acne too, like wah. Damn, these females are practically ending themselves so young just to be a 304. They're going to be miserable for 60 years just so they can have fun for maybe a decade. This is why I'm so nervous about vasectomies, especially when feminism promotes it. If you had one, let us know in the comments if there's any side effects you wish you'd have known before getting it done.
I personally don't want to end my chance of passing along my seed in the future. Ladies, chivalry is absolutely dead. I've got female clients coming up to me telling me that men's dating behavior has changed, that they are no longer offering to pick them up, helping them in their jackets, or doing anything that a gentleman would do. And on top of that, most men do not want to commit towards a serious relationship. But the problem is, that is exactly what women want. Commitment. All that men are saying nowadays in dating apps is, hey, you wanna Netflix and chill at mine? Or, hey, you wanna hang out later? I'll come to yours. Whose fault is that? That is absolutely 100% our fault. That is purely women's fault. If you're going to their house after just a couple of days or a couple of weeks and doing what you gotta do, that is not proper dating behavior. Women make it way too easy for men nowadays to simply get laid. We are coming over to their house like a free pizza for them to enjoy. Who wants to put in effort for a free ordered pizza? Nobody, right? Why would he change that behavior? Men would be absolute idiots to put in more effort and get the same thing, right? Most likely, men, after a few dates, few weeks, they are already pulling back effort. No more text messages, no more good mornings, no more good nights. Most of the time, they won't even tell you that they don't want commitment. You are just feeling it. That is heart-wrenching, but so logical. You are feeling no effort, no commitment, low commitment, and hoping for things to change. I have a client who told me that you know, he spent the night at her house, they did what they gotta do. In the morning, he had to leave a little bit earlier than she did. What did she do? She made him breakfast. Why are you doing that? What has he put on the table? For what are you doing that? You are doing that because you're building on potential and hoping that things might change. You're thinking to yourself, if I treat him the way I want to be treated, he will start understanding that I am girlfriend material. You're thinking, if I have the best sex in the world with him, he will start committing more. I'm sorry to burst your bubble, honey, but it ain't gonna change. It is what it is, and he's not gonna start committing more. You are giving him full boyfriend privileges, hoping that he's going to be your boyfriend, whilst he is sure that all you are is a little fling. He is getting full content without any subscription. He's getting all the wifey privileges without putting in any wifey effort. He's not even putting in girlfriend effort. He's putting in zero effort. So if we want things to change in men's dating behavior, 2023, 24, 25, for all the future ladies in this world, we need to pull on one string. Now, what does that mean? The more commitment he puts in, the more effort you can add. If he tells you that he doesn't want a relationship, listen to him. Now, don't try to read between the lines and try to change him. Listen to what he's telling you. Accept it, say thank you, next, and move on gracefully. It's not about playing silly games like not answering his text messages for three hours or random things like that. It's about restoring an equilibrium of effort and equilibrium of commitment on both sides. You are not putting in more than you are getting. You have to wait for the guy to put in a little effort to then give him a little privilege. He puts in more effort, he gets more privileges. That is a natural way of building a healthy relationship. It's about knowing your worth. It's about not handing him over a free prize without him having to put in any effort. Don't forget, men biologically like to hunt. It's in their genes. If you're giving yourself away for free, it's nothing special to them. If you're making them work for it, the more that he has to put in effort, the more worthy you will be for him, the more special you will be. This is what you want. You want to be special and not a free pizza. Like always, this dating coach is talking about how females are allowing Chad's and Tyrone smash the very day they meet, while these females are demanding these regular guys, including great guys, to jump through a ton of hoops and spend a ton of money on them just to date them. 
That's one reason why chivalry is dead, because most guys realize they're treating 304s like real, honorable women. Chivalry isn't just men being courteous and wooing a female the old-fashioned way. She needs to act like a lady, by being polite, soft-spoken, cheerful, and honorable. Which means she can't be dating anyone else, or even talking to anyone else while she's being courted by one man who's given her these benefits. These females aren't cooking food for a picnic date in the park, no. They're demanding a restaurant with at least a hundred dollar bill. Men as a whole acted the way they should and stopped giving modern women chivalry because they don't deserve it. Feminism itself is against the principles that chivalry was founded on, yet these feminists love these chivalry benefits. They seem to forget they're strong and independent when they're dating. And what this dating coach is getting wrong is that modern women love the chase. They love to try to be that female that tames the bad boy or player. They firstly go after the men that they aren't qualified to be with. Secondly, they're addicted to drama and trauma. So the more these top men treat them like trash and cheat on them, the more thrill they get going through all the emotions. It's like they're living in their own drama fantasy. And thirdly, what this dating coach isn't getting is that these females aren't even giving the Chads and Tyrone's wife privileges because they don't cook and clean. Two guys make similar comments. I've tried to help some ladies, happened two times, on the London underground with their huge luggages. Do you think I'm not able to do it? was the reply. I used to be old school, but I got yelled at for opening doors. I can open my own doors, and being called a creep for opening a door and waiting. Yeah, many of these females only want chivalry from the top 10% men who will pump and dump them, not from the average hardworking guy unless if it's a monetary benefit. Dude comments, our effort is a direct reflection of what we see as your value. Your value is based on what you are. Exactly. Like I said, men aren't giving 304s traditional benefits anymore. Hell, most have checked out of the dating scene in one way or the other, even if they're not aware of MGTOW. I ain't doing that. I'm just going. Suck it up. Keep it pushing. Thug it out. You know what I'm saying? That's the way what I do. I, I enjoy crying. I'm gonna put it like that. Mm -hmm. I'd rather cry every now and then before I feel like I'm crazy and I gotta go sit and talk to somebody. Hell no, nah, I ain't crazy. I'm just hurt. When the motherfuckers hurt, they cry. This is the life of a single mom. She wanted to be a baddie and let thugs hit it raw. Now she's a single mom for life because they've definitely quit it after they hit it. A lot of this is massive cope because no one is going to save her, especially with MGTOW. So it's come to my attention that you ladies are on villain mode this summer. And I mean, villainous wrath mode. And I feel like it's almost my job to help you out even more, to support all of these toxic decisions. Welcome to today's new series, very short and simple, how to gaslight men. A very easy, toxic tactic that you can use in your everyday lives. Starting with number one. Let's say you're hanging out with him, give him a weird look, just like, did you? Did you shower today? H have you showered recently? Men live for women telling them that they smell good, so they absolutely hate if you make them question how they smell. He's gonna be like, what do you mean if, do I shower? Yes, I did shower today. And then he's gonna be like, why? Do, do I smell bad or something? Just be like, I mean, you don't smell bad, but just don't, don't finish a sentence. I mean, it's not like you smell bad, it's just, I don't know. Just leave the rest of the sentence up to his imagination. Anytime he mentions getting a haircut, if he's like, oh, my hair's too long, I gotta get a haircut soon, or oh, do you think I should get a haircut? Literally look at him in all seriousness and just be like, <laughs> you're getting a haircut? Like, please don't text me once you get your haircut. Like, don't even giggle. And he's gonna think you're kidding. He's gonna be like, oh, girls hate when like, guys get haircuts, blah, blah, blah. And you're just gonna be like, no, like, I'm serious. Like, like, if you get a haircut, like, I don't wanna talk to you. And then just like continue on with whatever you were talking about before <laughs> so that he really thinks like you're dead ass. And I promise you, once he gets the haircut, he's gonna be so insecure when he's Snapchatting you. It's so funny. This next one's a lot. It's a lot, but, um, I used to do this all the time, but you're basically just going to make up a complete and utter lie. Like something is so wrong about yourself and then tell him the complete opposite thing weeks later. So for example, mine was that like, so I didn't go to USC my freshman year. So most guys that I talk to don't even know I'm a dancer, right? I'm 
like trying to be a freshman dancer right but my freshman year of college I went to like a conservatory um like a really good school for dance but I don't really ever talk about it I just kind of like forget that that ever happened so a lot of guys at school like never even cared to ask or if they did if they made a comment like oh like where'd you live freshman year I'd make up a total lie I'd be like oh yeah like I lived in capstone yeah I lived in women's quad green quad like I'd make up anything I'd be like yeah like I had three roommates they were shitty as fuck but like I met all my best friends on my floor like a complete and utter fairy tale so the year that I transferred here like pretty much by that point all of the old bars that everybody used to go to like all got shut down by that point so guys would always be like mentioning like old memories or something at different bars and then I'd be like oh like I didn't even get to experience that bar and they're like what do you mean you didn't go to that bar and I'm like sweetie don't you remember I didn't even go here my freshman year and these females wonder why they're single it's all fun and games until the wall hits then the jokes on them see because they allow themselves to be used by the Chads and Tyrones, after the 100th time when they get tired of being leftover females, these thoughts decide to fight fire with fire. But it backfires greatly because the players have options, so they move on to the next crop of 18-year-olds. And so then these females take out their rage on the good guys, and that finally red pills the men to move on. And that's how they become super single and lonely. Top comment says, Bro, I took your advice, and it high-key works. Any female that uses the word bro is for the streets 100,000%. And it works now, until the Chads and Tyrones get tired of the games and move on to younger females. So glad my toxic besties are on my side. This is on the internet, so men can find this advice too. But that's the state of the dating culture in the West. Instead of women learning how to make a man happy or keeping a man, they're learning how to make the relationship too toxic for men. And this is why the Passport Bro movement gets bigger every year. A red pill comment? That's gonna make you single nothing else. All the toxic behavior thoughts complain about, They've done it when they were young, so never feel sorry for a 304, because usually they're getting a taste of their own medicine. You're the most beautiful, funny, loving girl I've ever met. Um, you're perfect. But I want to see if I can try and find someone better. Um. And that's the future of all these modern women playing games, because at the end of the day, no matter how many men they've screwed over, father time wins. As always, I wish you tremendous success. Now it's your turn. What do you think? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Remember that if you leave the best comment, you'll get 5 bucks. Thank you so much for watching. If you found value in this video, hit the like and subscribe buttons, ring the notification bell so you don't miss out on future uploads, drop a comment, and share it. See you in the next video. Till next time.